for my boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, you can always be what you want to be. Let's go. The more you have fun, she a balancer. It get gala. Now you wake up, asa. One day, now you wake up, asa. The man, the man, the man, she a passer. The more you have fun, she a balancer. It get gala. Now you wake up, asa. One day, now you wake up, asa. But you know who lets in your weakness. Saki da po kuida ma business. Umwa kale fama kuli mi la ziko. Watu ya sana bantu wambi di muchad. Nyega nje iga ga turi chisi. Business ya lo tabagai. Kuku ya butolo ubi ke busolo evo undi kwa he aguimba. Some gandhi which can clap your hands For the ukira vako clap your hands Lise for my busy clap your hands Seven zero punch and clap your hands Gandhi which can clap your hands For the ukira vako clap your hands Lise for my busy clap your hands Seven zero punch and clap your hands The manje manje nishi ya pasa Nishi ya pasa One day na iwe ka pasa The manje manje Hello and welcome to Youth in Agribusiness a program designed to bring out some of the youth in Zambia who are the movers and shakers in agricultural production and agribusiness. Stay tuned. Farming is a business that has the potential to give youths many benefits. With the high unemployment levels in the country, farming is seen as a serious alternative. Many youths who have not been able to find mainstream salaried jobs have embraced farming as a source of livelihood and are making a difference including becoming rich. Farming is a very big business because when I moved around and when I took the statistics, you find that 80% of the rich people are doing their own thing. It's either a business of farming or they're in processing. So that kept me going. So now I've taken it as a business because when I started, I bought two oxen, a plow, but now through the same farming, we've managed to get a tractor. Meaning that I've taken it as a serious business and that's why I'll be spending most of my time I have to go to the farm because it's bringing good income for me. Most rural youths are seen as the future of agriculture. For Joshua, growing up in a farming family enabled him to pay his own school fees from primary right up to secondary school. My name is uh, Joshua Mateka. I'm uh, 32 years old and uh, I'm a resident of Sokotera village. I was born in 1982, right here in this village. I did my grade one to four at Chiwena Basic School. From there, I transferred, I came to Miova from four to grade seven. After writing the grade seven exam, I passed. I was supposed to go to Chibombo Secondary School, but by then we were just living with our single mother here. So she couldn't uh, afford for my boarding fees, so I just decided to go for a day at Nsanje Secondary School, where I completed in 2004. After completing school, uh, I went to college, but before then also, uh, I wanted to, to be in boarding at college where I went, but uh, looking at the financial constraints, I just decided to be a day scholar because even from grade 9 to grade 12, I'd also started paying for myself through doing a bit of field crops and also keeping of goats. So I managed to sponsor myself until I completed grade 12. From there, I went now to NRDC where I studied agriculture, majoring in crop sciences. After attending high education, most youths want to find lucrative jobs and live in the city. For Joshua, a full-time career in farming has provided a better option. You can have a lot of books. Go, you study, have qualification, but if you don't put them into practice, action. Some people are very rich because they're action-oriented. They're not very much educated, but because they're action -oriented. There are people who are very much educated, but they just have those papers. They, all they want is a good job, but, but things, it's about how you take it. You can be rich through this business. As for me, yes, in the future, when I have a lot of uh, income, a lot of business established, 
Maybe I would think of building my knowledge, increasing my knowledge to continue doing what I'm doing, not going elsewhere to swear from what I'm doing. No, that one I'm not thinking. I would just think of adding the knowledge to benefit me with what I'm doing already. Let's say if you're in manufacturing, maybe someone is trading, selling phones, cars. At some point, everyone will have a phone. Everyone will have a car. You will not be selling as you were selling at the beginning. But with the food, everyone would eat, would want to eat every morning. The population is growing. These people, they would need food. So agriculture is the only way forward because we need to eat and we need people to produce. So if they can get to the land and start producing, they will always have the market. There is a crisis of food shortage, people know this food. So if you can just start, that is an opportunity to make money. Farming is able to make oneself sufficient if they are able to take it as a business and sustain their livelihoods. Uh, mostly income we are getting it through uh, farming, that's the growing of crops and also keeping of these animals. That's where most of my income is coming from. Although others may see diversification as a guarantee to boost farming business, it is also seen as a way to keep money in various ventures. Diversification has worked for Joshua, who has decided to venture into production of various crops and other farm enterprises. I do the growing of crops and also the keeping of animals. As we can see, in the, the, these animals, cattle and goats, we have them so that if our crops are not yet ready for market, these animals can cushion. If there's a demand for school fees, these are at college, we can easily sell these. We can easily sell them and they have cash at hand. It's one way of keeping cash. Anytime you need it, to just sell an animal. So I do the growing of crops and also the keeping of animals. Growing various crops on his farm has also helped Joshua to increase on his returns from the various value-added crops. For the 2015-2016 farming season, Joshua planted 32 hectares of different crops. I've done about 12 hectares of uh, pigeon peas. I've also done 5 hectares soybeans. I've also done about 8 hectares of maize. And also I did just about 3 quarters of a hectare of cow peas. Like soya, we, we have already harvested and packed about 5 tons so far. That's 100 by 50 kgs and we are still harvesting. We're expecting about slightly above five tons, maybe six tons. So for soybeans, I think it will be about uh, 10 or 11 tons. Then for pigeon peas, it's my first time to do it. Maybe if we get three or four tons, for us even five tons, I think we'll be on the right direction. Then for maize, we're expecting something like maybe 20 tons. One of Joshua's major crop is soybeans. What I've seen is legumes are are cheap to produce or to grow and expensive to sell. If you compare maize and uh, soybeans, the cost of producing a kg of maize is slightly higher as compared to soybeans. But selling it, you find that a kg of maize now is about uh, one kwacha 50 ngwe. As compared to soybeans, it's about four kwacha 8 ngwe. It's about three times more than maize. So for me this year I've seen that uh, soya I'm going to uh, have good income from it. The cost of production is very low, but looking at what is coming from it, uh, I think we are going to have a very good harvest season and a very good marketing season. While some go into farming because it is the only available option, Joshua went into it as a career. Throughout his farming career, Joshua has been motivated by many things. I grew up in a family that was doing farming. And from the time when dad died, we remained with mom. She was not working. So for survival and a bit of our school fees, she trained us to go to the field. So from there, I developed interest of, uh, of being a farmer. Starting a career in farming is not an easy undertaking. But Joshua's determination and hard work has paid off. I've managed to, to buy myself a tractor and the trailer is there, the leaper. Then I also have built a house which I'm living in in town. I'm proud I've sponsored my brother and my sister. They have completed up to college level. 
and uh, we've been working and uh, it's only the last born now in our family who is still at secondary school. So with this achievement, at least we are, I'm able to even take care of my mother. Yes, they are never in, uh, in hunger. Every time we have enough to take to the market, we have these animals where at least in the morning they can get about three liters, four liters of milk to balance the diet. So with that, I think I'm happy. This is the boho Joshua has sunk from the harvest of 2015-2016 farming season. For one to achieve such benefits, one may think it requires a lot of money to go into farming. But how did Joshua start? So when I worked briefly in 2009, I started by getting two oxens. I bought two oxen, a plow and six bags of fertilizer. That's how I got started. That year I invested about 150 bags. So when I sold the produce, I managed to buy about 32 bags of fertilizer. So that's how I kick-started the farming business. So from the income that was coming from the farm, I got instructed to say, if I continue like this, I may be somebody. Because looking at my brothers who are coming behind, also wanted to go to college, and my sister, looking at just a salary, it wouldn't be enough. So for me to support for my brothers who are coming behind, that's why I got motivated to be producing at my farm so that I can have enough income to see them through. Despite their determination and hard work, Many youths face a lot of challenges and others get discouraged to go into agriculture. What Joshua has achieved has not been without challenges too. We need where the local leaders can allow the youth to compete on their own if there are such opportunities of owning land. The other thing is also sometimes the cost of inputs like the previous season when we are just trying to prepare for the season. The, the quacha depreciated, so the price of fertilizer just skied up. Those were a bit of challenges. Then also we would need the, 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 lending, the financial lending institutions to also prepare a package for us, the, 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 the young farmers. Because you find that sometimes the collateral they need is just too high. While others see farming as a risk business, Joshua has taken it as an opportunity to do business. Yes, people would think that it can be a risk. I can in part agree with them that it's a risk. Where there's a risk also, there are returns. For me to spread the risk, I keep animals. I also do crops which are different, like legumes and the field crops. So that helps me if there's less lens. If I fail in maize, I'll get something in the, in the legumes because they just need in, just enough rainfall. So by so doing, we, we are not on the losing side. We balance. Youth farmers play an important role in ensuring food security for current and future generations, but they cannot achieve this without challenges. However, despite the challenges that youths may be faced with in agriculture, the industry is still the way forward for many of them. You have to start from somewhere. They don't need to wait until they have millions in their pockets. I started very small six bags of fertilizers. The government is encouraging people to go to the land, they're opening up uh, forests where people can start cultivating. So I'm encouraging our youth that they can employ themselves and employ other people. It's not always looking for a job when you complete school, you go there, you can still produce and make a lot of money because everyone has to eat. If we are to go forward, we are to achieve as a country, let us utilize that labor force from the youth. Let's go and produce Let's feed the nation. Let's even have surplus to export. It all lies on us youths. Indeed, agriculture is the predominant economic line of work of the rural communities and can play a vital role in the social economic development of these communities. One can be able to employ himself and indeed be rich. Join us next week as we move from Joshua in Mumbwa, who has employed himself and become rich, to the Kanakantapa youths, who have secured their future through aquaculture. For further details, contact the producer, Youths in Agribusiness, P.O. Box 50698, Lusaka.
pasa Ni manje manje ni ishi ya pasa The more you have so ni ishi ya balanza Ike kala, na iwe kapasa One day na iwe kapasa